today we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, and joy. Now we light the fourth candle. This is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated self-giving love in his ministry as the Good Shepherd. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It is a time to love as God loved us by giving his most precious gift. As God is love, let us also be love also. In the book of Deuteronomy, we find these words. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 10, 17-19. From the Gospel of John we hear, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. John 13, 34 to 35. Let's pray. Teach us to love, O Lord. May we always remember to put you first as we follow Christ's footsteps, that we may know your love and show it in our lives. As we prepare for our celebration of Jesus' birth, also fill our hearts with love for the world, that all may know your love and the one whom you have sent, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Now please stay tuned for a message of love. Hi, I'm Pastor David McMaster. I, uh, I'm the pastor at Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, and it's, uh, it's a joy and, a, and an honor to be able to share the Word of God with you today. Um, it is the season of Advent, and uh, if you don't know what Advent means, it is simply the arrival of a notable person or thing. And leading up to Christmas, Advent is a time when we look at um, the Advent of Jesus. Advent is where we reflect on the good news of hope, love, joy, and peace uh, that comes from Jesus entering into the world as a baby. And so today I have the honor of talking to you about love and, and particularly God's love. And I want to do that by pointing you to a, a famous, um, well-known passage in, in the New Testament, uh, one that most um, cr new Christians memorize right off the bat. And so you may know it. It's John 3.16. And it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This verse reminds us of God's love. It is the reason why we have Christmas. And I want to work through this verse and consider what does this verse mean in light of the advent of Christ. The verse begins by saying, God loves the world. What does that mean that God loves the world? Well, let's consider the word love for a moment. Love doesn't necessarily mean a romantic relationship. Love is much deeper. It is a feeling of a deep affection for something or someone. It's like the love of a, a parent that they have for a child or, or vice versa. All through scripture, we see that God has deep um, affection for his children. God loves his creation and God has created each and every one of you. The Bible says that you were fearfully and wonderfully made, that you were created in his image, which is to say that you have incredible uh, and immense worth to God. And even more profound is that God loves you deeply. A common misconception about love, though, is that it has to be fair, that love has to be a 50-50 partnership. And our culture teaches an ethic that, that love you only love if it benefits you back. But that's not the picture of love in the Bible. Love is rarely fair and, and it doesn't require fairness. God gives more than what, 
to us than we will ever be able to um, give back to him, even if we are to love him with all our heart, soul, and mind. And so love for God, it cost him everything. And for us, it doesn't cost nearly what it cost him for us. And so we need to recognize that, that love is not easy. Love takes intentionality. It takes sacrifice. It takes commitment. And to love someone that has rejected you takes it to an even deeper level. One of the things that we have to recognize is that we've all rejected God. Adam and Eve, um, if, you, if you remember the story, um, they were the first two humans that God created. And, and they sinned in the garden by eating fruit that God told them not to eat. And, and, uh, and as a result, it, it paved a way for us to all inherit a sin nature. And as the Bible would tell us, is that the consequences of sin is, is separation and eternal punishment from God. Now you may be thinking, well, this is not very good news for Advent. This is not very good news for Christmas time. But hear me out. It is good news because the whole reason why Christmas exists is because there was bad news that God wanted to turn into good news. God doesn't leave us helpless to to wallow in our sin, to, to live lives of hopelessness. God gives us hope. He gives us light in the darkness, which is a a metaphor referring to Christ stepping into our world. The whole reason why we put up Christmas lights this time of year on on our houses or on our trees is to represent the light of Christ. It points to the fact that that there was light coming into the darkness and, and that's pointing to the fact that Jesus stepped into our world and that's what Christmas is all about. And so here's the good news. And it's the second part of the verse and it says, God gave his one and only son. He gave his one and only son. This is what Christmas is all about. Jesus stepped into our broken and, and messed up world as a little baby. Now consider, God gave his, his most valuable gift, his one and his only son. Consider what you would give to save someone that you loved deeply. Would you give all the money in your bank account? Would you give all your most valued possession? Would you give up your own life for someone that you loved? God considered the cost of your soul and said, It is worth the life of my only son to save you. It is worth risking his own life to to step into our world, to pursue um, a mission that would lead to you being saved, which is incredible. And so that is what God does. He sends Jesus into the world as a baby, which is an interesting thing to consider. You ever wonder why Jesus came into the world as a baby? And you think about the, the humility of that. The God of the universe who created the world by speaking it into existence is now having to learn how to speak. He would grow up the same way that we would grow up from a baby all the way to an adult. I have an eight-month-old daughter uh, and she is such a joy. But here's the thing, when you're a baby, you are fully dependent on your parents for everything for your food, for your diapers, for your your safety, your mobility. And for a while, she couldn't even hold up her own head. There's a humility and a helplessness to, to being a baby. And Jesus, the Savior of the world, God, comes as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, born into a manger. There's a humility to our God stepping down from glory and entering our world as a baby. So why did Jesus come as a baby? Here's why I think that Jesus came and entered our world in that way. So that you cannot say to Jesus, you don't know what it's like to go through what I've gone through in every aspect of life. Jesus walks through all of life, his experiences, he experiences to the extreme everything that we might face in this this fallen and broken world. He knows exactly what it's like from birth all the way to death. Jesus knows what it's like to be a baby, to depend on his parents. He knows what it's like to be a child, a teenager, and an adult. He knows what it's like to go through really hard times. He knows what it's like to to lose someone that you love. He knows what it's like to cry. 
He knows what it's like to be hated. He knows what it's like to be mocked and misunderstood. He knows what it's like to go through suffering. He also knows what it's like to die. And this is all found in the New Testament. And so Christmas is profound. It's where Jesus started. It's where he began. And he entered the world to experience the world. And it wasn't without a specific purpose. Back to the verse, what is the purpose of of Jesus entering into our world as a baby? It says, so that you could have everlasting life. Jesus had a mission. And God would prove his love for you through that mission. That mission would lead Jesus on a three-year ministry that would ultimately end in him dying on the cross. And what was designed and intended for evil, God uses for good. And so it is on the cross that Jesus would die. It is on the cross that Jesus would take your sin, your shame, and your guilt. And he would take it upon himself. It would be there that he would pay the punishment for sin on your behalf. It would be there that he would die and suffer on your behalf. And But here's the hope. Is that three days later, Jesus would defeat the grave and he would resurrect to new life. Jesus is not dead, he is alive. And that's the hope that we have as Christians, that our God is not dead, he's alive. Christmas is the, the beginning of this mission. The resurrection is the the fulfillment of the mission. And so how do we respond to that? Well, the greatest gift that you could ever receive this Christmas, that is far better better than any gift that you will receive under your tree or from somebody else, is the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And the amazing thing is that gifts are free. You don't have to pay for a gift. They're they're given to you. Um, God has already paid for the gift of eternal life for you. And all you have to do is receive it. It's free. You don't have to wait until Christmas to unwrap it. It's something that you can accept today. And if that's you, if you want to receive that, that greatest gift of love that God has ever given humanity, and here's how you do that. It's the ABCs of of salvation is to admit, believe, and confess. First is to admit that you've sinned against God and and to repent, which is to simply say you're going to turn away from your sin and, and, and live the way that God's called us to live. Second is to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and accept God's gift of forgiveness from sin. Third is to confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and as Lord. Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 13 in the same chapter would say, For everyone who calls upon the name of Jesus will be saved. Salvation is the greatest gift that you could receive today. The greatest gift of love that God has given us. And when you do that, Jesus responds by saying, He will make you a new creation. He will adopt you into God's family. He will forgive your sin. He will hear your prayers. He will give you hope, joy, love, and peace. He will give you the promise of the Holy Spirit, and he will secure your eternity with him. So that's the greatest gift that you can receive this year. God didn't just say he loved you. He proved his love for you on the cross. And so Christianity, it's not... It's not a religion, it's a relationship. It's a relationship with a God who loves you so much. And here's the difference. Religion says, here's a bunch of rules that you have to follow and then maybe God will love and accept you. Christianity says something different. A relationship says something different. It says you are loved and accepted in Christ, not because of what you've done, but because of what Christ has done for you. Religion says that you have to take the initiative. Christianity says that God took the initiative and all you have to do is accept it. Christmas is more than just decorating trees and fun traditions, snow angels and and Christmas carols, opening gifts, whatever that is for you. It's about God who loves you. From the beginning, he's had a plan to redeem you and restore you through his son, Jesus. This Advent, would you consider God's love? For you. If you are a follower of Jesus, 
find joy in remembering the ultimate gift you have received from Christ and give him praise and give him glory for that. If you're new or you're, ex- you're exploring Christianity and this is all new stuff to you, I don't think it's a mistake that you're listening to this at this time. God has a free gift of life for you purchased through his death and his resurrection. And my prayer is that you would consider taking that gift of life and of love that he offers you. And if you have, I would encourage you to, to pick up a Bible, begin to read the, the Bible and, and get connected to a local Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church. And remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And that's the hope that we have. Let me finish by praying. Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross to demonstrate perfect love towards us. It is a gift that you have given to restore our relationship with you, and I thank you for it. Lord, we admit that we are sinners and that we need you desperately. God, you are our Lord and our Savior, and we surrender and commit our lives to you. Lord, would you remind us of the hope of eternal life that we have when we give our lives to you. Help us to love one another as you've loved us. We give you glory. We trust that you will lead us deeper into your love, Jesus. We pray this in your powerful and wonderful name. Amen. God bless.